sorry, um, from Cybertech. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. You see, being a cyber tech is meaning being taken care of. I just got my espresso, which I was waiting for in vain for some time, I would say. So, welcome. That's a lot of people here. Thanks for coming. Um, as you might guess from the title already, uh, as one of the last talks in the conference, this won't be a very, very serious affair. Uh, so the topic is important, I think, uh, but the presentation will be hopefully enjoyable. I hope you all had already your coffees. <laughs> and let's start. So uh, about me, in, very briefly, I'm doing stuff with Postgres since 17 years, maybe. Uh, mostly as a DBA, sometimes developing this and that. But the main thing uh, which I like the most is just trying to be helpful uh, to whoever is coming up with a question about anything. But if it's Postgres, then it's optimal. So a uh, few short words about the company. You might, at this time in the conference, you might already know. Uh, we have a number of uh, international offices alongside our uh, headquarters in Austria. And there are some new uh, offices coming up, uh, starting with India. Where is Raj? Raj is not here. He's here. Okay, whatever. So we will have uh, three more offices very soon, uh, just to cover all the world as far as as much as it is possible. Okay, um, so just a very short thing about this uh, presentation. I will present here solutions to problems with databases, uh, but it is not something that will be uh, applicable all the time. Uh, it won't go into technical detail, but not much at least. And it also uh, won't cover all your problems, as said. Some it might. It just tries to be helpful uh, when you are facing problems. And who is this for? So uh, maybe for DBAs uh, who have contact with developers, maybe had already problems in communication when something happened or you are a developer and have contacted DBA and you had uh, communication issues maybe, or you are a DevOps engineer and you have to do everything on your own. <laughs> so yeah, uh, well, you might ask Stack Overflow, for example, or you rubber duck, this, these are the solutions. And maybe a support engineer, uh, helping to organize communication to customers or anyone else who is interested. Now, the topic is this. Something is wrong. Well, things were working fine just until five minutes ago. Now they aren't. It happens. Who, who had such a, an uh, experience in their lives so far? Okay, that, that's still better than I expected. Um, uh, and in many cases, you will get some report that something is wrong. You will understand that the first minute, but, well, not necessarily any detail. Like, the, the application doesn't work. Um, well, yeah, if you are a developer of the application, then it even might make sense. Uh, if you are a DBA, then there are chances that there are more than one application around. Um, so th this is not very helpful. Or some actual phenomenon, customer service can't work. Uh, I will tell why this is interesting, uh, for me at least. Uh, or just as in the title, the, the database is slow. Um, 
I basically had all three in my career so far. The middle one, the customer service problem, uh, now that was the only one where I, where I got such a report and I knew immediately what was wrong. Well, it was me working on a database, <laughs> not realizing until that report. So in that exceptional case, it was helpful. Uh, otherwise, it is usually not. So, um, for th th this is basically aimed for uh, people reporting problems, but if you are, for example, a support engineer and try to get a report out of your customer, um, then you will probably ask the same questions. So, be as specific as possible. So, the application could be, I don't know, the car rental application just saying something or other uh, things, what the impact is. Uh, I remember time spending half a work day on something that was in the end not that very urgent at all because there are customer facing issues where your business is suffering, uh, maybe even uh, incurring uh, financial losses because you can sell shoes. Uh, used to work for Zalando uh, earlier, that's why I'm telling that. We were really selling shoes and there were problems. We were f losing money if we didn't. So, uh, customer facing issues, normally these are the most pressing ones, except when your CEO cannot generate their reports for some business meeting or whatever then it might be even more pressing than the previous one. Mm, well, hopefully it doesn't happen too often, but it's not without uh, an actual example. But, and this is probably uh, known to everyone who is handling other people's databases, that someone reports something that something is terribly slow and it turns out after hours maybe, uh, trying to find an issue which is not there that, ah, yeah, it is the dev system. So developers see something being slow <laughs> and they haven't reported, hopefully, themselves. Just ask someone to tell and then you are working on something that is not there. It's hard to find uh, such problems. Okay. Uh, the Apart from the impact, it's obviously very important to have a description of the problems that can be understood. So uh, I, as a DBA, might not know too much about your application logic, for example. So if you jump into telling me something about a class where there is a method of doing something, uh, I might not have an idea at all. So you should be you should understand what the other end is expecting from you. Uh, this is the same when you are trying to communicate the solution in the other direction as well. Um, maybe tell what you have checked already, that you try to exclude this or that. There are certain things usually which still work fine even if it's burning somewhere. Um, or there might be not, and then you have a total network outage, for example, so that's also possible. Um, one thing is important, that uh, don't uh, waste too much time on collecting all the details, because you might not know everything, you even don't have to know everything. Uh, you just have to come up with a usable uh, first report, and then we will figure out the rest later. Okay. Um, let's go into a bit more detail. So far we figured out that uh, something is slow, so let's go and fix it. It's easy. Uh, I have to tell you something. Uh, I used to be a scientist and I am a somewhat old school guy, so there will be somewhat old school science uh, from now on in this presentation in the form of flow charts. So let's just go and fix stuff. Uh, the database is slow, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. I promise there will be even more silence. Uh, some of that may be even 
usable. Um, so, okay, uh, the first thing, I don't know if you worked with storage engineers ever, uh, you tell them that there is something fishy in the storage, they would say no. You collect evidence, they would say no. Sorry if there are any storage engineers, I will apologize later, you will see. Uh, and in the end it turns out that yes, it is the storage after all. Uh, but this is the same, if you are reporting something to a database engineer, they will say that no, it's not the database, the database is super stable, uh, no one ever managed to crash it so far, uh, and it cannot be, but yeah, well, sometimes it still can be. Um, in these cases, it really helps uh, if you have observability, so you monitor stuff. You have metrics about uh, what the database and your application are doing. Uh, also have an idea of what the normal values of these metrics should be. Um, you have maybe alerting, I mean in a sensible way that you don't just press your phone all the time on Obsgenie and muting some totally useless alerts, but it's alerting only when there is something wrong. And you have logging, both on the application side and in Postgres, or even tracing, that's, well, uh, modern stuff, um, but very useful uh, to figure out where the problems might be. Uh, just a few examples, this is uh, our own PG Watch, it's a demo uh, dashboard showing some key metrics. <coughs> so that you can have a quick view if something is wrong. You can even set colors if some, some thresholds are uh, passed, and then it will be a bit more colorful right now. In this demo database doing nothing, everything was fine, sort of. Um, or you can have nice graphs, and you see, for example, on the bottom right, that's the number of log, uh, I mean, logged error messages in the Postgres logs. Uh, it might be a lot or not. In this case, it's not that bad, given the database this is coming from. But uh, yeah, it was, there were definitely errors. Uh, you might know if you can live with that or not. Uh, the CPU usage is definitely suspicious here, or at least it used to be at six in the evening it's, yesterday. Okay, do you hear me in the back? Nice, good, because I... Okay, I, I will... Okay, I, I will try to speak up even more. Is this fine, well, what I'm doing? Just there is an echo and I'm hearing myself pretty nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, well, whatever. Uh, that's, yeah, uh, that was a report with detail, you see, and uh, I will try to fix my part. Uh, thank you. Really, but, uh, that was specific enough. Um, uh, what a luck to have that. So uh, I was mentioning tracing. This is an example um, from Open Telemetry uh, uh, document. Uh, and boo, now is the time you can boo because there is a line here, sorry for just leaving my place for a moment, uh, showing that the database is definitely misbehaving. Something was happening there for 264 milliseconds and a bit more, but it was my sickle, so we are still fine. <laughs> okay, um, in any case, if I were a my sickle engineer, which I'm not, uh, then I would know that I should probably look into my database or at least into this query, which uh, produced these results. Um, yeah, so that is a possibility. If it's not the database after all, like that trace was from somewhere else, you see a trace where three milliseconds uh, was the latency of the query, then, well, it can be the application itself. 
not unheard of, uh, to be honest, or it can be the network even, or, well, it might be just your own laptop doing, I don't know, a virus scanner update or something similar. Uh, you would notice because it will blow away your pieces of paper from your desk on either side. Um, yeah, it, it really can happen that people are just don't, are noticing that something is pretty okay everywhere except here in this black thing. Um, but that's silly, I know. Um, so when the application is the culprit, it might look like this. This is database science. Well, there is a very simple method in a non-existent but very Python-looking uh, programming language. You execute a database query, uh, basically getting the plate number for a car. Uh, it returns fine, and then you something, do something else. In this case, I modeled this behavior of an application with a one-second sleep call, and then you return the plate number to the caller of this function or method. This is a function, maybe. Um, and, well, this happens more often uh, than you would probably expect. Just it's not that obvious that it's sleeping somewhere. It might call an API from the other end of the world, or it might do something important, but it takes uh, some time and it will probably appear to the caller that the database returned this plate number pretty slowly. Well, it didn't, just, well, still the plate number was there somewhere in the system, just not coming out fast enough. Um, it might be that, uh, for example, the application is just waiting for connections uh, to the database. It can be a few different things just general slowness of some, something. This is not helpful, I know. Um, there might even be some timeouts happening. Uh, more often than not, these happen because of uh, configuration issues. So there might be two things behind all this. Uh, well, you just initiate too many connections to the database and it is just fed up because there is max connection set to 100 and you are trying to open 150 connections, well, it won't work, obviously. And if your application is not uh, killing these attempts quickly, then you will just wait for them. Um, obviously, max connections is usually uh, the case when you don't have a connection pooler, but if you do have a connection pooler, it still might be the same if the configuration is wrong. Uh, if there are too many pools, for example, with too many potential uh, connections, then the pooler will wait until the database uh, has some free slots and the application will know nothing about the poolers internal, so it will just wait. Uh, this will be very uh, slow. So basically, if you have connection pooling, it can be bad. If you don't have connection pooling, it can be bad. You have to do both right. Um, yeah, so this is where we are now, science again. The database is slow, but is it really the database? Well, if not, then we are done uh, and have a coffee break. Uh, or if it is the database, that direction, then we are again at the phase that, okay, we have to do something, fix the problems. Uh, the do something might be a bit more complex than the previous. Uh, so th this is just a small help uh, for imagining how complex it can be. Maybe it is not that. Uh, okay, how bad the whole thing is. Um, you might notice after a while looking into the problem that in the end it's really, thanks, just a single query very localized symptoms, or everything is slow. It is like this. Um, well, 
sometimes the single query is also like that, but uh, it depends on which query is slow. Uh, or more often there is a mixture, so there are some stuff running very slow, some others are fine. Okay, basically here we have a uh, three-pronged uh, choice, like Poseidon's trident. Either it is a very localized problem or not, or it's a mixture of something. Let's go to the left first and see what we can do with a single query issue. Well, the developer might even have an idea. So you identify which query it is and they will have, oh yeah, ah, we did something to it, now it's slow, sorry for that, let's fix it. And five minutes later you have a new deployment, everything is fine. Or the ORM might know. Uh, now that's nasty because I don't know if you have ever tried to talk to an ORM. It's not easy. Uh, or there might be logs, application logs. For example, they might show something. Um, Postgres logs might also show something in case you have the necessary settings like log min duration statement to catch slow uh, queries. Obviously, slow can be a lot of different things, like 100 milliseconds to five minutes or anything in between or beyond. Uh, yeah, you have to have good logging in any case. That's the message here. Just a small remark, that's one of my problems in my brain, that if you have logs, especially database logs, please uh, take care of them, just like you would take care of your database access, because some of the database, I mean, the data in the database might appear in there as well. Don't expose them to, I don't know, in a public S3 bucket or something similar. Um, okay, so either in the logs or else where we found the query, let's fix it like this. It's fast and easy. Uh, except that, well, sometimes it is not. Um, if you have the query, you have a couple of tables, you might even start a couple of analyze comments just to refresh statistics uh, until you get up to speed yourself. Uh, sometimes this even solves problems and you don't have to do anything else. Well, then fixing auto vacuum settings probably later. Um, or if you have the query, you have a quick look at it and might already know without looking at anything else what might be wrong. There are patterns which pop up every now and then, which are just bad usually, and you will uh, spot them. It needs some experience, obviously, so that don't expect this to be on the first day of your DBA career. Uh, it helps if you have a nicely formatted query and the full table definition. So it's the card table that is not a full table definition. It's mostly something like this, thanks to the Neon uh, people uh, for this uh, snippet from a tutorial of theirs. Uh, you have uh, columns, indexes, constraints, uh, foreign keys, maybe triggers, maybe partitions, and so on and so on. It's important to know this, these details. And if you still don't know after looking at the table and the query, like there is an index missing, then use explain. Now that's a whole set of uh, presentations in itself. So yeah, let's just not go into too much detail, but there are some ideas what might uh, be wrong. A slow query is often doing a lot of unnecessary work, like here, basically delete, trying to delete something from a request table, uh, scanning the whole table, and then discarding all those rows. This is like 90 million rows, uh, because there was no matching row to be deleted. Uh, an index could probably help in this case. The probably is really there because these uh, conditions might not be that very easily indexable anyway. Or you have an index like here, I removed some parts of the explain plan, but it is still doing a lot of work for nothing. Um, you will see it in the buffers, uh, hits and uh, reads. 
Well, there is an index, but not the right one. That is also happening sometimes. Um, well, create a better one or try to rewrite the query, for example. Or there is table blow, just uh, causing a lot of reads for those very little number of rows. That's also a possibility. Or you are using conditions in your workloads which are not supported by indexes because, I don't know, date trunk is a typical uh, suspect here and there are some t uh, patterns here and there. Yeah, you might have to rewrite the query or create a very specific index, but that might be a bit costly on the long run. Yeah, if the wrong index is used, you might want to raise statistics target or even create custom statistics for the uh, given query or do something else. Uh, it's again pretty long. I don't want to go into details here. And this is where we are at this moment. <laughs> well, you won't see it from even the first rows probably, but you will see when you go to the slides later. Uh, I even plan to put together all this on a big sheet of PDF, <laughs> maybe, uh, so that one can just look at that. Um, so we were there. Uh, post huh? <laughs> That's not I wanted to show. Can we get rid of this somehow? It's, again, Poseidon's trident under this uh, projector menu. Thank you very much. Um, so everything is slow. We might see long waits uh, in our monitoring, obviously. Um, we might want to log those, so we can set uh, Postgres logs to catch them. Um, there might be just no free connections left and the application is again waiting for connections, but it is definitely the database's problem in this case. Um, then there might be just too many active connections, so the application is just doing too much for the database. And there still might be stuff that, it, that is running fine. I will just jump over some of this uh, because I don't have too much time. Um, so. Yeah, I wanted to uh, sing at this moment. This is what was uh, popped to my mind. Uh, I am waiting at the counter, says the database query or the application even, um, because there are logs held for too long. For example, there is an idle in con uh, transaction uh, <laughs> connection somewhere. Um, it might be the developer trying to fix something and forgetting their client open uh, in a not auto commit mode, for example. You might set a session time, I mean, I don't need transaction session timeout just to prevent these. Um, also, use logs and pages that activity to find out who was that or what was that, find the source and try to fix it. Um, or there are just long running transactions based on application logic maybe, or someone is running analytics queries on an otherwise very busy OLTP primary or something like that, or someone had the idea that now is the time to update a lot of data, uh, and now we are selling shoes for Christmas, and uh, that doesn't work very well together usually. Um, yeah, Long-running transactions in general are evil, they make database is unhealthy. So this is a case where I found an idle in transaction uh, session somewhere. Um, unfortunately, I cut this uh, chart a bit, not very nicely, but uh, there are two, the, the top there is a thousand uh, of CPU load sort of. Uh, you cannot really translate it one to one, but uh, the green stuff is doing something, the orange stuff is waiting for locks. Uh, suddenly, when killing that single uh, transaction, everything 
became nice. So when you see this, low-hanging fruit, look for idling transactions, if there is any for more than, I don't know, a minute or even less sometimes, just kill it uh, and you will be fine. Except when not, and the dotted line going from the right down, that's my optimism that we will fix this problem eventually, even if not by killing an island in transaction session. So, yeah, there, there are locks held for too long for other reasons than this. Might straight out blocking everything. Like, imagine someone had the idea, there is a uh, database about your order somewhere, and they want to add the new column, and that doesn't help too much, uh, or indexes are good for performance, except when they are being created without the concurrently keyword, just like materialized views uh, and outer table I already mentioned. And there are other ways to really block out your own connections uh, from the database. Or there are just rights to a very central table, a bit too many of them, which might result into uh, table bloat, uh, which will, because this table is so very central, it will slow down everything. There, uh, yeah, like, uh, this is the wrong order of the uh, pictures, but this was a case of like that. You see, or you could see that there was an update statement running a lot, really a lot, basically with every transaction, and it caused a lot of uh, waiting. Once we managed to do a vacuum full on it and make the table way smaller, things returned to sort of normal that's to be seen on the right end of this. Um, yeah, so if there is something blocking, if you can stop it, please stop it. If you cannot, well, you might have to wait until it's gone. Uh, it's not nice. This waiting time is not nice usually, but there are cases you cannot do too much to it. Um, and I mentioned bloat, table bloat, uh, when the physical size is way bigger than it, I mean, the actual contents of the table would uh, explain. Uh, there are reasons uh, in Postgres for that. Well, try to unbloat it one way or another. Vacuum full or PG squeeze or something might come to the rescue here. Uh, this might still not fix just about everything. Uh, what is coming is the last probably low-hanging fruit. Uh, but uh, after that, it's a bit more complicated. Yeah, uh, that is also a possibility that you only have, uh, well, too many active connections which are really doing something uh, not fast enough. And then we can just jump back and try to fix queries maybe one by one. Uh, and, well, that might solve the issue after all. But these things can accumulate sort of. So, Things are fine, 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 nearly fine, and suddenly they will be very bad. Just, uh, and it's hard to catch the nearly fine status. Uh, and when it's very bad, then you are stressed to figure out what's wrong. Um, or there is just Christmas coming, really, your uh, web shop is going crazy, and you haven't prepared for that. So probably you just have to uh, beef up your hardware or cloud instances or whatever else you can beef up here to make things work fine. Uh, yeah, prepare for peak times, especially if they are predictable, like <coughs> Christmas in certain businesses. Thank you, 15 minutes. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, well, and this is the final piece of low-hanging fruit, I promised you. Sudden drop of query performance might be caused by some change in your system, like a new piece of workload hit the fan. Uh, well, the workload is probably good enough to hit a fan, but uh, it still uh, found the database and the whole system unprepared. Um, if you don't know in advance about that, then it 
might not be nice and probably figuring out this under stress is not the best times of your work day, but whatever. Um, yeah, talk to each other if you have database people and developers and some other people in between. Uh, it helps. Yeah, uh, sometimes it is not that uh, very easily uh, spotable, like a new deployment coming in with new tables and new everything. It might be just a shift in data uh, distribution. I think there are some colleagues from my old team who might remember the case when we had a big warehouse, like between one and 2,000 people working in there, and there was a printer somewhere printing the labels that would be put onto the boxes which would be then sent to the customers. Now this printer ran out of toner or paper or electricity, or I don't remember exactly. It stopped working and stopped printing. Suddenly, uh, the status, which was approximately to be shipped of uh, parcels, which was very rare because well, there was a box, there was a stamp, it went out, and when it reached the DHL trucks very close to there, uh, normally it would take one, two minutes maybe being in that status. Now in this case, because there were no labels, there was a big queue of these boxes, and uh, instead of like a hundredth of a percent of uh, the act active orders uh, being in that state, it was one person, then two persons, and all the queries that were working fine normally were not working at all anymore. Uh, yeah, because one single status became uh, way more frequent than it used to be. Um, it was a fight to find out what was wrong. Uh, in the end, we just had to raise statistics targets so that the tail, which is normally not even visible in the table statistics, would be visible after all. Uh, yeah, uh, another typical thing nowadays, you have cloud set up, uh, you have IO somewhere, like an EBS volume or something, and it has a size, and with that size, it, there comes an IOPS limit, and when you hit this limit, then suddenly just everything gets very slow, basically, because everything is just waiting on the IO, waiting, waiting, and then it can get pretty bad. Um, in most cases, there is a quick fix workaround to that, which is increasing the storage. That's a good trick. But for example, with EBS volumes, if I remember correctly, you can do it only every six hours, and then there is a cool down period. Um, you cannot do it too often. Uh, but that six, those six hours might win you the time to fix the actual issue, uh, which causes uh, the high IO usage. Mm, yeah, that, that's a possibility. Uh, and it really comes like boom especially if you are using burstable uh, stuff, so we have smaller uh, instances and whatnot. Um, but yeah, terms and conditions apply. Really don't misuse this because it can hurt again if six hours is not enough to fix your problems. Um, or it might be just server restart and then your cache is gone uh, I will show a case which was pretty bad. We still could not explain why it was behaving like that, but it was one of the worst uh, cases of this. So you will lose your database system cache and will have to warm it up again so that the query performance is like it used to be before. Or there is some problem with storage, so some lower level problem. I have to tell this is not uh, something we see very often. Thank you. Um, well, it might still be, but try to exclude all the other possibilities beforehand because, for example, I don't know too much about storage when it really comes to problems with storage. I am a user of storage. So this is the case I wanted to show you. The, 
uh, green one again is the useful database work. The blue one is IO weight. Basically, in some cases, 33% of the activity in this instance was just waiting on IO um, after a server restart. Uh, even Google support could not explain why this was happening. It went away after a week or so, but until that it was just terrible. Um, yeah, IO weight is evil again. So if you have recent changes, uh, then try to see what those changes are. It can be a lot of uh, stuff that I just uh, mentioned. If there is anything suspicious, try to track it down. I don't know, do a vacuum analyze if you just suddenly got an import in your database or add an index for a new workload uh, somewhere. Increase storage for IOPS in this case, but that's really just a firefighting measure. And if it's fine, then okay, it's fine. We can have another coffee uh, with the colleagues. And now come the part which is sort of not so very clear cut, I think. And uh, I won't go into more detail with this very scientific flowchart stuff because uh, it's hard to order. After a while, you will have a sixth sense probably to figure out which one is to be looked into first. But until that, well, you will just have a list. This might be this, 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 and go and try to figure out uh, what is going on. Sometimes databases stop working nicely, not with a boom, but so gradually worsening stuff. Uh, depending on your alerting and everything, it might be harder to notice, obviously. For example, it is just started doing recently too much I.O. Maybe it's because your memory uh, is not big enough. I mean, actual RAM or the RAM is already big enough, but shared buffers were just brought over from a smaller instance earlier. No one uh, managed to uh, update it because it needs a Postgres restart even, and you cannot afford it, for example, it can happen. Or, for example, work MEM is too small, or at least for certain queries it is too small. Um, it won't help too much, and then you will start waiting on I, ah, like I showed that. That was obviously a different reason, but the outcome will be very similar. Um, you can have a look at your cache hit ratio, for example. If it's very bad, then it can be a sign that, well, you don't have enough cache size. I mean, shared buffers. There is nowhere uh, the database can uh, put those pages it visits often. And then you will see it is reading a lot from disk or file system cache or wherever. Um, yeah, if you have it, I mean, bad cache hit ratio, uh, then things might be pretty bad already. Try to go for a resize or reconfiguration of things. But it also might be that you are just reading too much unnecessary data. Um, at a client of ours, uh, they just figured out at some point that this gradual worsening and uh, increase of the IO uh, activity was caused because they were wrapping stuff into uh, a, in a way that it could be sent to uh, GraphQL queries. So they were building JSONB data and the select star somewhere there was pretty well hidden, thank you, uh, well hidden down in those queries until someone figured out that some of those stars, so the old columns, some are big, going into toast tables, totally unnecessarily in most cases. Uh, yeah, please try to get rid of select star anyway, because that's just usually not necessary, uh, in an application at least. Yeah, uh, so if you don't read the data you don't need for your application, you might get away with this easily. 
Um, and yeah, no, I, well, that's just a possibility. It can be way more complex than that. Um, or your CPU is just plateauing for some time. Uh, and if you pick some of the critical queries, they just behave fine. No problem with that. Or I don't know, for example, during the night at 2 a.m. everything is fine, but during the day everything is just very bad. Then it might be that, well, you just simply have to crank up the core count. Uh, in a cloud setup it might be just a click somewhere. Uh, uh, otherwise it might be a bit more complicated than that. This is a case uh, where we figured out exactly that. Uh, you don't see the bottom, but this is one week's worth of CPU load. Uh, steps, uh, well, with some exceptions, over 90%, nearly constantly, but days on it was over 90%. Uh, and never hitting 100%. Uh, so this was when we had to decide, yeah, uh, we have to go for a slightly bigger uh, instance, and it helped. Uh, it might not help in all cases. Uh, there might be some load that is just waiting to jump on you, and if you give four times more CPU cores, then it will just skyrocket up to 98% again and will stay there forever, then you will have to find what it is uh, really. Um, anyway, from the climate change or preventing it or making it less bad, uh, it, it makes sense to try to lower your CPU load, not by cranking up CPU cores, but taking care of your query performance. That was from me. Thank you very much. Um, okay, thank you for the talk. And we have maybe time for one or two questions. Are there any questions? Hello. Uh, you mentioned at some point prepare for peak times, assuming you know them before. Sorry, I don't hear it right now. Okay, uh, my apologies. You mentioned at some point prepare for peak times. Yeah. So how does one do that? Like I can understand not, let's say, to not vacuum, to not create a big, you know, to not populate big tables, all that kind of stuff, to not, to not do that sort of stuff, but how does one prepare? Uh, for well, such case. Uh, it depends. If it is a traditional Postgres instance which is supposed to serve a predictable high uh, load for maybe a week, then yeah, just add RAM, add CPU, go for a bigger cloud instance or whatever. Uh, there are even services, but those are usually not open source Postgres, which would help you going uh, that way. Or use, I don't know, there were some uh, presentations about serverless Postgres. Use some similar solution so that you have the capacity when you need it, and maybe you don't pay for it when you don't need it. So it, it is hard to tell in advance and without knowing the setup, but. Yeah, Thank like you. that. No problem. One last question. Anyone? Okay, then thank you very much. Thank you very much.